The Dennis Report. I'm Dennis Acheson. Today's guest is Jill Humphreys. She's with the Artist Health Alliance out of Toronto, Ontario. She is here to help Fredericton and New Brunswick build a similar service for artists in our province. We know our artists by the amazing work that they provide for us and the nurturing that that work gives us. Sometimes though we may not be aware of the quality of life and the conditions which our artists live in. Jill's conversation teaches and exposes us to some of that world and the support mechanisms that would very much help not only the artists but our community's culture. If you like our program, please click the Patreon link at the top right corner and share on Facebook and on YouTube. So here's Jill Humphreys in the Artist Health Alliance. So thank you for coming. Thank you. I'm delighted to be here. And thanks for coming to Fredericton to bring your magic to the town. Oh, well, I'm not sure whether it's magic, but <laughs> I love Fredericton. I think it's a lovely little town. Here, so. Great. So um, the obvious place to start, so the audience has uh, some orientation, mm -hmm. and we will put links underneath in Facebook and on YouTube. Right. Mm -hmm. But uh, why don't you give us an intro to um, what you do? Well, with the Artist Health Center, I mean, right now I'm doing a you know, fair number of things, but I'm on the board of an organization called the Artist Health Alliance, which is a charitable organization that supports the Artist Health Center, um, which is um, you know, the clinic uh, you know, involved, uh, you know, associated with this. And the clinic itself is, which I think is the, you know, for you people, you know, probably the most important thing, is it's uh, located at Toronto Western Hospital, uh, and it's a fully you know, fully operating clinic. What is remarkable about it? One of the things is that it is um, it has a lot of complementary medicine people practicing there, which for a big hospital it, it's really quite something. I mean, and by that I mean not just you know, say physiotherapy or massage therapy. Mm -hmm. I mean shiatsu, uh, naturopathy. Uh, nutrition a bit, but it, it really it, it runs the it runs the gamut Great. of um, complementary uh, you know, treatments as, as well as psychotherapy. There are two two doctors there that are um, uh, trained psychotherapists as well, um, and so it's and I, the other thing that's important here is that it's for professional artists, um, and. <clears throat> There, you know, the criteria for being a professional artist is essentially it's the artist code, and yeah. you have to you know, make your um, you know, a significant amount of, of your income must come from from your artwork. Okay. What I'm doing with the Artist Health Center and the Artist Health Alliance is um, Artist Health Alliance. I'm on the board of the Artist Health Alliance, which is this charitable organization that supports the Artist Health Center which is a clinic at uh, Toronto Western Hospital, which is a downtown uh, hospital in, um, you know, in, in Toronto, a huge hospital. It's part of uh, University Health Network. And the, one of the remarkable things about it is that it has the facilities for a lot of complementary medicine. Uh, you know, shiatsu, uh, naturopathy, uh, oh, chiropractic. Chir oh yes, chiropractic, massage Cream therapy, sympathy, um, acupuncture. Yes, yeah, acupuncture. You know, various other ones uh, you know, like that. Um, the practitioners at the clinic, in, and there are also two doctors there who are um, they're medical doctors with um, psychotherapy training, mm -hmm. and all of the practitioners are ones who are there only part time. Okay. One or two days a week, uh, and I believe even the two uh, medical doctors are. And I'm not sure about that, but um, the others are all there, essentially as needed. Some of them are more popular than others, uh, but um, uh, you know, they all have independent practices. They're all independent pract practitioners, yeah. and they all have practices somewhere else you know, as well. So, an obvious question, especially for a, a new audience or a rookie audience, you know. So, it, it's the Artist Alliance. Um, <clears throat> Is there something unique to the health needs of artists compared to the regular public? Oh, and very, it, much. And yeah, very, very much. Very, very much. Because that's a nice, nice theme to go explore. Yes. Because I'm sure it's pretty rich. So can you oh, lead us into yeah. some of why it's different and why the clinic surfaced in the right. first place? Well, the clinic surfaced. I mean, the history of it, it goes back first 
um, first talks about the clinic were in 1995, and it took eight years before, you know, through talk and uh, um, hmm. uh, needs assessment, all of this, until oh. finally the clinic opened in 2002. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and the original needs assessment pointed out just how much of a, a need there really was. Most of the artists at that point were making, uh, well, I have it here, um, 40, 46% were making less than fourteen or fifteen thousand yeah. dollars, and seventy percent were earning less than thirty thousand yeah. um, dollars. A lot of them didn't have any health coverage other than um, you know the Ontario Health uh, OHIP, um, and a lot of them they just couldn't afford couldn't afford anything else, even though they didn't need to see yep. perhaps an MD. And, and this is all um, health needs that wouldn't be covered by OHIP. Yes, absolutely right. Hmm. And there are health needs quite often that are, are quite unique to artists. Um, you know, <laughs> the way, you know, I mean, I'm thinking particularly dancers. Sure. Uh, you know, who, you know, will pull muscles in a way that, you know, that um, football players won't. Yeah, the, the um, physical wear and tear is significant. Yeah, right. And um, again, in visual artists, painters using toxic chemicals that, yes. um, you know, can really, you know, play havoc with your life. Um, and, you know, other, other ones, musicians, you know, uh, various kinds of, of uh, physical problems yeah. that are, you, you know, uh, pretty well unique to, um, you know, musicians, theater people, all of that. There are, yeah. you know, various ones that uh, they can be treated by, you know, somebody who hasn't had much experience with artists, but it certainly helps, you know, to have somebody who knows how to treat artists. It's yeah. fascinating to think of artists as having a particular set of uh, injuries, for lack of a better word. Mm -hmm. um, we understand that from professional athletes fairly well, because right. media, Obama, sports, okay. television is dominant, uh, you know, so we're exposed to it a lot. And we do get it in workplaces when ergonomics came in and learning about sitting properly, sitting at a keyboard, you know, we're aware of that. We don't get those stories um, from artists, unless, of course, it's a, a fringe story and it's something exceptional and the media can exploit it a little bit. Was there a precipitating event of some sort that allowed this um, moment to occur and then the clinic be created, like a, something that galvanized the awareness? Or was it a slow accumulation over time that we're missing something here and we have to rally together to create this? Well, I would say that a precipitating moment was actually the founder of this, uh, Joyce Ann Sedimus, who is a former Balanchine dancer and had to stop because of injury uh, when she was probably 30, you know, somewhere in around there. Uh, backing up a little bit on that, before she founded the Artist Health Center, she founded an organization called the Dancer Transition Resource Center, which is, as you, know, as you can imagine, um, helps dancers transition from the time when they cannot, you know, they can no longer perform mm -hmm. into training for something else. And it is a going concern. It's been going for more than 30 odd years. Is this all dance? Yes. Yeah, this is for, again, for professional dancers. Yep. Um, and um, it is, it, it's just a you know, tremendous success. They've helped, I don't know, hundreds of, of dancers, probably close to a thousand dancers. I'll, I'll do, I may be wrong on, on that number. That's okay. Then, once she's <laughs> up and running, I mean, this, this woman is so, well, she's a force of nature, is what yeah. I can describe her. Well, as. so she's taking her dancing energy and it definitely Absolutely. has a focus so somewhere. So her next one was, she realized that a lot of, of artists, dancers particularly, but also other artists, um, you know, were low paying, didn't, you know, didn't have the money to get proper treatment. So she decided, you know, that this was her next project. And uh, back in 1995, she uh, gathered a number of people together. Artists, right from the beginning, this has been artist-driven. Um, and then she also had medical people driven, you know, uh, med medical people were on the original board. Um, and, um, you know, business people, you know, people that could uh, contribute financially as well as with expertise. So that was how it all got started. And it took... Um, as I say, it took about eight years, you know, before the, um, you know, before the, uh, you know, the clinic finally opened. There were a lot of setbacks along along the way. Um, originally, it had planned to, um, you know, to be held at Toronto well, at Wellesley Hospital hmm. in Toronto, and then that hospital got shut down. Hmm. And so, what do you do? So, fortunately, Toronto Western 
um, you know, said, okay, this could be part of their family services division. I, the name right now escapes me of what it was then. Right. But um, so finally in 2000, the uh, agreement was settled with, uh, you know, with, with Toronto Western, and it took about almost two years to build the clinic. Uh, you know, because that you know, so it's a space for it. Standalone uh, building. Oh no no no! It's oh, in it's, a, it's in the um, it, it's right in the hospital. Okay. And it's so it's just a renovation of that part of the oh, hospital. Oh yes, yeah no it's it's a huge hospital and this it's up on the third floor of the Crimble Wing I think it is, um, but it's it's a contained space you know just for the, this clinic, and it's um, it has. You know, it, it has a lot of rooms, various kinds of rooms. Yeah. It's got a soundproof room for um, uh, you know, music. It has a, a room with a sprung floor for dancers. And trying to convince Fascinating. the hospital people that you needed a sprung floor. <laughs> yeah. That was really quite yeah. something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, that, that is its function for those people compared yes. to concrete with you, linoleum. Why do you need a soundproof room? Well, musicians need that. It would help to have it you know, for dancers as well. Yeah. Uh, there are treatment rooms for chiropractic, <laughs> um, massage, all of that, you know, with the proper tables for that. There are a couple rooms for, uh, you know, for psychotherapy treatments. There is another room with a piano in it for, um, I think sometimes they have sort of a music therapy, and mm. you know, so they, they can use that. It's also a very small meeting room. Mm. And then the, uh, there's a room for the nurse practitioner who is, um, she sees every pa new patient when they come in. So she has a room that, uh, you know, for interviews. It also has a, you know, a, she gets a medical history, and it also has a table so that she can do a um, very preliminary kind of, of sure. medical, uh, you know, examination. So it's it's really quite the, um, you know, quite quite the, the, the complex. Quite the setup. And there's an education room yeah, as well. Does it manage to survive on its own outside of the ups and downs of political movements or political mm -hmm. changes or funding changes? Has it got a sense of autonomy and balance of its own so it can survive it on its own? At the moment, yes. Um, you know, you never know with, you know with health things. But at the moment, uh, the uh, Toronto Western Hospital is very supportive. Okay. It, um, you know, they, they look at it as something that is... New, innovative, you know, it's really quite something to say that you've got a, you know, something that is you know, world-class, unique in the world, um, and deals with artists. Yes. Um, and so, uh, no, they're very supportive. Okay. And as far as I know, they, they will be for, you know, for a good long time. I, um, I want to make the connection between, uh, we're going through major shifts in social change right now. Yes. Um, there's huge paradigm changes. You can feel things crumbling, and there's a bit of chaos. And there's a need for something new to surface right. in the next 25, 30 years. Right. Um, the industrial model from the 50s, for example, doesn't support the economy anymore. We need something new. Right. Always, always, in moments of transition, it's the artists mm -hmm. who guide you through all this stuff. Yeah. And, and say, here's the direction. Um, I'm thinking of the poet who became president in, uh, and I'm going to blank on the country. Uh, what was his name? Vaclav Havel. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, those people. So there's a need for the artists to rise again, and then the thought of there's a, a well-being center <laughs> to help support. That's that's kind of phenomenal to think that that surfaced at a time when we need artists more than ever to guide us through these big transitions. Well, it's interesting that the um, I'm not sure whether you call it a motto or not, but something like that is helping artists keep their art. I think that would be. <laughs> that makes sense. Stop that for a minute while I get the exact. Title. No, it's okay. <laughs> Just like a credo, right? Uh, yeah, keeping artists creating their art. Awesome. And that, um, you know, that that is essentially what you know, the point of it hmm. is to you know to help uh, to help artists uh, enable themselves to uh, you know to create their art hmm. because I mean, given low you know low income, uh, uh, yes. so many of them just. They get, you know, they will treat themselves, or they will go to go to the web, haven't helped them, yep. uh, and <laughs> um, or they will rely on friends and family. Yep. They have family doctors, a lot of them, but some of them just go to walk-in clinics. It, it's fascinating when it comes to arts and culture in a way, and the right. Canadian experience, um, because we're geographically so big. But if ever you want a measure of our true size or scale, if you look at any um, specific population. 
So I'm thinking, here's a country of 35 million, but during the first Trudeau era, I created the Canadian content rules, which started to create a market for some people, right. and then canlets started to emerge in the literary right. world. Um, wasn't quite the same in the music industry, um, so they were still going south, you know, so much talent mm -hmm. going south. Uh, <clears throat> we only have a population base to support so many artists, I know. so we tend to think, oh, there's thousands of them, but it's probably more in the hundreds range in some areas for uh, comedians, um, actors, you know, and, and I'm, why am I trying to go with that? I'm thinking that that's why it's so close and so needed. You know? Well, I think... And I don't need to be accurate with my numbers. Oh, no, but I we think... we get inundated so much with American culture. Oh, I know. We right. think that, right. or their version of culture, which is more like a commodification of culture. Yeah, yeah. no, I, th I, think, I think your numbers are quite off in terms of total number of artists, you know, okay. uh, you know throughout the country. And... Well, I read somewhere yeah. that, you know, Canada can support 300 fiction writers. So oh, that, that's what I've no, got in the back of my yeah, head. No, no, there are oh, there are probably four or five hundred artists in in uh, Toronto alone, okay. um, and Montreal, of course, Quebec is thriving. Yes, I I don't really remember now what the latest census numbers are, but I would I would put it as many thousands. Uh, and that you know, just all across the country, uh, a lot of the con concentrated in you know in the big cities, understandably. Sure. Um, Winnipeg has a thriving dance community, thriving theater community. Yes. Vancouver, um, you know, as as well. Uh, Quebec has uh, you know they are very very active um, yeah. in um, you know in in all of the arts. Uh, so. Um, so this you know, gives this gives us a clear picture then of the need. Yes. Oh, absolutely. Uh -huh. Right. No, and this, I mean, right now, uh, you know, this, the um, last year, approximate, or this, this you know, within the last fiscal year, you know, the clinic will be, it will have been seen, seen 3,000 unique clients. And this would be ones that have come in probably for the first time. Um, and maybe ones that have come in many years before, but um, it, it will be over 3,000 unique clients. Um, and let me check. Oh, God, I mean, I'm terrible on numbers. No, it's okay, uh, but we get yeah. a sense of the scale. Right, yes. Um, yes, estimated 3,764, you know, almost uh, 3,800 um, you know, unique clients you know, for, you know, for the year. Um, and... Um, no, I, you yeah, know, yeah, that's total client visits. Uh, clients for uh, this, you know, this past year, approximately 620. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I just, I got, the, got those two. No, it's well, good because you, know, you don't go once. <laughs> you go back for, you know, your seven or eight visits to get you through your bumps. So, uh, yeah. Right, yeah. So, uh, and this, this is just touching the surface yes, you know, in, in Toronto. And uh, thank you uh, for exploring the scale. Yes. Uh, uh -huh. Because I, I wanted to distinguish Canada is different from the States. And yes, Quebec, of course, much. has its unique culture element. Um, uh -huh. It's right. probably... Uh, on their own curve with how they take care of the right, to a degree. Uh, right. Well, in the States, there are um, sort of discipline-specific clinics in various places. Uh, mu music there, you know, in Boston, I think it is, there There are some, uh, you, know, uh, you know, centers for musicians. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, there are centers perhaps for dancers, but musicians, I think, more than, you know, than most. Uh, so it's not as if it's total wasteland there. But uh, Artist Health Center is the one that is unique in that it supports all artists, right, from, um, you know, writers, theater, music, um, other performing artists, um, you know, including clowns, circus artists, um, and, you know, with dance, everything from classical dance to hip-hop to, you know, to all of that. So if you, if your group held a potluck, it would be the best party in town. Absolutely. <laughs> 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 you could picture it, you know, you need a pretty big space and lots of room for it to fill. Oh, oh, have, yeah, uh -huh, right. <laughs> so how do, how do you come to be in connected with all of this? Are you... Well, I'm, I'm also on the board of the Dancer Transition Arts Center, uh, with, or uh, Transition Resource Center. Um, mm -hmm. Through Joyce Ann Sedimus, uh, when I moved to Toronto, I volunteered for Dancer Transition, uh, because at that point their office was about a half a block from where I lived. Mm -hmm. So, you know, this, I've always been interested in dance, so, you know, I, I volunteered there. And volunteered for quite a while, and then 
suddenly uh, I mentioned it to somebody else that I you know I'd be interested in in uh, you know being on the board, and Joyce Ann just jumped at it. Hmm. So been on the board of Dancer Transition, and then she asked me if I would be on the board of the Artist Health Center. And I happen to have a facility for taking notes, so I ended up as secretary with both of them. You said that so gently. <laughs> well, I mean, to me, it's easy. But um, and yeah, you know, so I mean, I've I've been secretary of both of them for you know for many years now. And, and, uh, Great. Yeah. Did you have obviously an affinity for the arts beforehand oh, yeah. in, um, uh, in your personal life? Uh, was this ever ingrained in you as a child, or oh, something oh, that abso- was manifest abso- in your bones? In how oh, you ab- absolutely. I mean, when I grew up, there was very little other than classical music. You know, in my in my you know a few show tunes, um, you know, and that was it. I mean, that was and this this was of course all the records mm-hmm. um, and so um, theater. I was actually at the first. Uh, First year of Stratford. Okay. Closing night, first year of Stratford, and I've been hooked on theater ever <laughs> since. Um, I like dance. I, you know, I don't have either the ability or the the determination to be a dancer. Um, I, I quite like um, you know visual art, although I don't. I feel much more attuned to performing art than you know than to, yeah. than to visual art. But yeah. yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's always been part of my life. And, uh, yeah. So there's a nice fit then with um, uh-huh. where your passions and interests are with yeah. your uh, ability to take copious notes. <laughs> 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 Great. So now you're here in Atlantic Canada. Mm-hmm. Um, are you here to spread the word? Yes. Right. Yes. Well, Tim Snow, my cousin, is very interested in, in um, getting something started here for artists because there, I mean, there's there's such an artistic community in New Brunswick and particularly in, in Fredericton that um, I mean, to me, it was just an absolutely marvelous idea, you know, to do that. I mean, it, obviously, it would not be nearly as elaborate as um, you know as as it would be in Toronto, but at least it's starting the seeds of this. And again, to have all of this uh, artist-driven, the only that's the only way you can do it. You know, you've got to find out what the artists need, what they want, um, what their concerns are. Uh, and so, so tomorrow, when I, I'm uh, speaking to them, I understand that it is um, all artists. Um, bureaucrats not allowed. <laughs> fine, you know, fine with me. But to get their ideas on yeah. where to go. Um, you know, in Fredericton, because it's, um, you know, it would certainly, it would have to be a lot smaller, uh, obviously. Sure, scale. But I'm sure that there are physicians, uh, physiotherapists, uh, you know, massage therapists, all of that, those people who would be, um, you know, are probably working with artists now. Well, if there could be some place that they could all go. Mm-hmm. Um, and again, I think the other thing is that people... Uh, Quite often, don't realize you know the the psychological toll, you know, of, you know uh, on artists. Uh, well, well, I didn't yeah. want to go there right yeah, away, but the sure. whole notion of mental health, yes, major theme right. through Canada. Yeah. Um, thank heavens for um, some of the campaign. The awareness campaign comes from Bell um, Services, and they use that lovely um, double Olympic uh, athlete whose name I'm just escaping right now, who's their spokesperson, oh. and she'll you know ride for uh, mental health. There's always Lots of attention on awareness, but then when you dig a little bit to try to find the delivery or the funding, um, it doesn't quite match the need. We have to educate everyone, Mm -hmm. but you need the support systems, the delivery mechanisms. So you're right at ground level with, with, no, no, we don't want to talk about it anymore. We want to get on with doing something. Mm -hmm. And artists in mental health, um, with um, Robin Williams passing even as an example, you know, and suffering from depression for a long time. That's a common thing through Mm -hmm. comedians. Right, because of their ability to see the world the way they do, and mm-hmm. take something right. dark and make it light. But yeah. inside, they're working on something. Oh, yeah, very much. Mm-hmm. And certainly, I mean, with artists, it's one of the things that has uh, surfaced within the last couple of years. You know, with, within the Artist Health Center, is the number of patients who come in, um, and it's mental health, emotional problems, stress, sleeping disorders. Uh, anxiety, performance anxiety, creative block, um, all of these things, which to me they're all, uh, maybe a psychologist would disagree with you, to me they all get sort of lumped together under 
psychological health or mental health, um, severe depression a lot of the times, to the extent that it's really quite debilitating so that the artist can't, um, can't you know, create their art. Mm -hmm. um, and I think the other thing that I should mention at this point, because I'm, I'm involved with that, is within the artist and, uh, you know, uh, artist, art, uh, artist Health Center, there's a fund called the Joyce Ann Sedimus Fund, named, named after her from... Uh, after the um, uh, a founder, and this is a fund that will provide support for artists who are within you know very low income, uh, and they get up to for each application they get up to seven hundred and sixty dollars, and they can apply twice, uh, you know for that, and then after that they would have to wait either two or three years, and I'm not sure which it is right now. But um, I'm on the re review committee. The, Ar the Artist Health Alliance administers that, not any of the medical judgment, but we, we review the applications to make sure that they meet the criteria. First of all, criteria of um, you know, being a professional artist, you know, that they meet the um, you know, criteria for you know, essentially a means test. And that is on a, on a sliding scale, you know, a single person, I forget now what it is, but um, you know, then if you have, um, you know, if you have you know, one dependent, two dependents, um, and you, 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 have to show, you have to show your CRE notice of assessment. Mm -hmm. um, so that, and what, what we have noticed within the last mm, six months to a year is the bulk of the people are ones that are there for stress, um, you know, and stress can manifest itself as either physical or uh, whatever. And so, um, you know, those are the ones. And of course, I mean, that kind of therapy, I mean, you can burn through $760 pretty fast, um, or even, you know, even double that. Yeah. So it's, um, you know, it, it's pretty quite you know, distressing that, uh, and one of the things, there was a survey that was done a, few, a couple of years ago, um, a certain number of the people who had to stop treatment because they had run out of the subsidy. And they would have to wait, I think it's two years, uh, you know, before they could apply again. Um, and that's just because there's such a demand for it. And the funding for the, for the subsidy uh, comes from an uh, annual gala. You know, that is, uh, you know, that helps, and this is with uh, association with the Toronto General and Western Hospital Foundation, um, and quite often we'll partner with another arts organization, uh, mm. you know, as well. So um, that's where we get our funding, you know, for the, you know, for this uh, Joyce and Sedimus Fund, and you know, we've had, unfortunately, we've had to ration that, um, you know, the, um, you know, the number of people because. Um, there are just too many applying, um, which is, is really a shame. The other thing I think is important about that, though, is that um, when it comes to psychotherapy, uh, the you know, with two medical doctors you know, working in the clinic, their treatments are covered by OHIP. And there's also a group therapy that is covered by OHIP. But then there's another one, possibly two other practitioners, um, psychotherapists that are not doctors, and their their treatments are not covered, you know, by OHIP. Uh, so it's those are the ones that um, you know, once you once you've gotten you know, sort of bonded with uh, you know, with a, a psychotherapist, you don't want to switch to somebody else. So you know, a lot of these patients patients are just simply keeping on with her, uh, maybe going to some of the other you know group therapies yeah. as well. But um, you know the Joyce and Zedemus Fund is absolutely crucial. You know, to the offer, it's something like thirty percent of the um, of, of the patients come in and, and um, you know need help that way. As you describe all this, what resonates is the parallel to how we talk about um, poverty levels in the country mm -hmm. and the social assistance programs in the country right. and in any community. Um, quite often, people may not put artists into that category oh. because we, you know, artists are a different breed. They, they come from this other place and oh. also they're visible. They're starving artists. <laughs> there. And, but it's so true. Oh, absolutely. And then there's uh -huh. all the pieces in, in behind it that go, so you talk about health and well-being, which we're talking about, but right, right behind that's food and access to healthy food. Uh -huh. And that could be a challenge. Um, 
there may or may not be a literacy element to it all, but then affordable housing becomes a thing. If you're, sure. If you're living off fifteen to 20000 a year mm -hmm. um, in Toronto's market. I don't Canada, know how they like, do how it. How do they patch that together? Because if I understand it, um, at least even a fraction of it is the big element for artists is time. Absolutely. They, they mm -hmm. need time to go do what they want to go do, which mm -hmm. is why your catchphrase is so lovely. Mm -hmm. And and. But so to have this job, to have enough money to pay the bills so they can be free oh, to do that. Absolutely. Uh -huh. that, right. That's a different kind of dance. Right. And it's not just young emerging artists. No. Uh, a lot of them, we do see, not a lot, but we do see a certain number of people who are over 60, have been professional artists for many years. And, um, you know, just because they have you know, very low income to begin with, they don't have that, that many resources. Hmm. So there are, you know, a number of people who have applied for the you know, subsidy fund, uh, you know, that way as well. I think with younger artists, I suspect that the bank of mom and dad helps to a certain extent. But um, not when you're married and have two children. We do get a number of thank you notes uh, saying we thank you so much for all of your help. Uh, you know, without it, uh, you know, we would not be able to do what we do. Particularly when it comes to people that are, are given subsidy grants. Um, you know, they were you know, uh, not too long ago. Um, somebody truly just burst into tears. I need this so much, uh, and um, others perhaps not so much. But um, a number, a number of. Um, very well-known artists, you know, have also, uh, you know, uh, take, you know, take advantage of the clinic, and on the on the um, website, there there are two videos there. One of them uh, describes the clinic, and the other one is artists speaking about their um, and people like Jean Lamont, who's the retired artistic director of Tafel Music, uh, R. H. Thompson, you know, the actor, um, Peggy Baker, the dancer. I think she is one on there. Um, Yes, I'm pretty sure. But an awful lot of artists just describing the way it's so important for them to get help at a place where the practitioners know, know and understand artists. Mm -hmm. uh, so I would recommend that you know that you know that, that people take a look at at, um, you know, at those because they're uh, they're very good. You know they're they're um, uh, they're on Vimeo. Okay. Um, but um, if you you know check the artist health website, they're you know they're right there at the very beginning. We'll, we'll of it. put the links in. Are there any um, artists who are like the 1% in the artist world where they've had financial success to go with their careers? And do they loop back and, and fund it back? Athletes quite often right. will create uh -huh. funds and then make sure that right. some of the money gets yeah. back to the uh -huh. community. Right. Does that help support it too? Has that evolved um, yet? I don't know. I don't know whether or not you know how many contribute to um, you know to the Artist Health Alliance. It would be through the alliance that you know okay. that they would do it. Um, but I, because you know the, I'm I'm not privy to the you know, fundraising of that. Okay. But at the gala, you know, every year there are um, artists that that go there. Um, you know, and um, you know they will get on and truly just testimonials yeah. on um, you know this is what the you know the artist health center has done for me. A couple of those I think are you know are on, on that um, on that video, uh, and then there are other artists who are um, oh they probably wouldn't you know, be getting uh, you know, giving testimonials. But they would be there. They're usually one or two artists seated at every table for this, and they get about 150 people at, at these. Uh, and um, I mean, for a lot of people, it's really exciting, you know, yeah, to sit at a table with, you know, with, you know, with, with an artist. Um, so they will contribute that way. Uh, and um, I, I think that that's probably it. Pretty good. But as far as artists contributing back, you know, financially, I just don't know. Okay. Um, yeah, uh -huh. it, it probably is happening. Oh, maybe I, I suspect it. Somebody it will go is. and do uh -huh. some homework and find right. out. So um, tomorrow you're going to be giving a talk uh -huh. and help get this momentum going for here. Right. You want to walk us through a, an abridged version of, of what you're going to touch base on tomorrow? Have you done? Have you given some of us? Given some of that to us already? Or yeah. Uh huh. Um, do you have other elements then to the talk that? Right. That, well, um, what I what I have. Um, that's so much stuff here. Yeah. Um, that's not the one. Um, yeah, th this is this is the one. Roughly, what I am going to do is, you know, talk about the clinic itself. Yeah. 
uh, and um, you know describe who it's for and you know brief history about it, yeah. um, the operations. It's run by the hospital, yeah. um, and uh, the hospital has um, you know they're you know they they uh, pay for the support staff. Uh, you know there's a nurse practitioner. A clinic coordinator, a reception, they are all hospital employees. So all the, the structure and the mechanic. Too. Yeah, uh, right. Mechanics. And then there are you know, the practitioners who, as I said, were uh, you know, uh, independent. Then I'll be talking a bit about the facilities, you know, the, the rooms, um, the services. Most are fee for service. Yeah. And um, the, yeah, there's a list here actually of the um, uh, services off here, acupuncture, chiropractic, craniofacial th service therapy, clinical nutrition, mindfulness-based cognitive therapy. That's a you know, very big one. Yeah. Uh, massage therapy, naturopathy, and shiatsu, uh, and various kinds of psychotherapy and physiotherapy. And then I, there are a whole uh, slew of stats here you know, that I have that I'll be going through those. Then I will talk about the uh, Joyce Ansidemus Fund and how you know, tremendously important it is. And then um, we'll talk a bit more about the uh, relationship with the Artist Health Alliance. So would Fredericton and New Brunswick be the first other one, the first one outside of Ontario? Uh -huh. Right. That'd be fascinating. Oh, I mean, I'm, t I'm just delighted. Hmm. I mean, you know, absolutely delighted that, um, as I say, you know, Fredericton's not a large place, yeah. but uh, there are so many good artists here that, um, you know, and they, they need something like that, you know, for sure. And if it wasn't for Tim, I mean, that, you know, it wouldn't even be, you know, yeah. be around. It needs a catalyst. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, another interesting part of your story with the Toronto experience is that they somewhat self-organized. You yes. need the catalyst and you need some outside funding and you need to know that it's going to be possible. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. before you even start, right. like, is this a feasible idea? Without the full intense business feasibility uh -huh. study or a government feasibility uh -huh. study. Right, yeah. Um, yeah, so, no, the, um, as, I, as I mentioned earlier, I mean, this has been artist driven right from the beginning. It started off with what they got, a steering committee mm -hmm. that made sure that, that there were things like sprung, sprung floors and uh, yeah. soundproof rooms. Yeah. Um, and then um, it has now become uh, what's called the artist committee. And you know the purpose of the artist committee is to support the um, uh, you know to support the clinic um, and uh, in various ways. So the, with uh, spreading the word, obviously they've done some fundraising in the past, uh, and uh, they had one project which they haven't done for a few years now, but it was called the Clock Project, and they were provided with a clock mechanism. And, you know, this is primarily visual artists and sculptures. And they said, okay, create a clock. And these were for sale. And they were marvelous. I mean, you know, absolute beautiful works of art. And it was, they did that for two years. And it was, just, it was pretty demanding because they've got, they've all got their own, um, you know, art to, you know, to, you yep. know, to do. But, um, you know, that's, that's one thing. The, another thing that they work on is... Um, it's called Art in the Atrium, and this is at Toronto Western Hospital, and the um, you know the main floor of the of the hospital is um, you know there's a big atrium there with their you know, drugstore and and um, food court and all of that, and so the artists have uh, you know presented art, sometimes visual art. Uh, there was once there was one for. Um, students at Ontario College of Art and Design, um, other ones like that. They've had musicians there, they've had dancers there, and it provides a little bit of income support for the artists. They're paid minimal, I mean, whatever the scale is, I'm, I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. But um, that's all done through the, um, you know, through the Artist Committee. And there are two people, the co-chairs of the Artist Committee, uh, sit on the board of the Artist Health Alliance. So they provide input into what the artists you know um, feel and uh, and that's very valuable because the uh, the board itself it does have artists on it mm -hmm. but you know you you tend to maybe not see quite see it in quite the same way and so they will say hey wait a minute you know maybe you should look at it you know this way yeah so it that works very very well yes and the other thing I think that's important is the um, you know the outreach with um, with all of this and, and this is partly through the clinic they have workshops that they do um, again you can see a list of them on the um, you know, on the web website and then the artist health alliance has their own workshops outreach program um, you know that has uh, uh, 
you know, they have uh, one that's called this year, it's called the Artist, Artist Toolkit. This is for artists. Uh, focusing primarily on mental health and, and emotional issues. In the past, it's been um, you know, on, um, you know, on, on other issues. And then they have one for um, uh, post post-secondary students um, you know, in the various um, professional art schools in, in Toronto. Uh, surprising number of those. Uh, you know, a lot of the community colleges there have, um, you know, have um, uh, uh, schools, you know, some kinds of, of programs. York University has theater, uh, dance, you know, other mm-hmm. ones. Uh, Ryerson has them. And then there are other schools like the Royal Conservatory of Music. You know, they have a professional program. Uh, and uh, Randolph Academy is, is another one for performing arts. Um, School of Toronto Dance Theatre. Um, you know, and so the Alliance will give, go out and give presentations, workshops to these, um, to the students at these schools, um, encourage them to take care of their health right from the very beginning, making them, you know, because they are, all, they also are eligible for the clinic and also for the uh, subsidy fund. Hmm. So making, you know, making it clear that they are, um, you know, they're very welcome. Um, and then there's you know sort of a, a outreach to the other parts of the community, working with other art service organizations, um, you know, giving talks with them, um, you know, private presentations somewhere if necessary. So there's an awful lot going on hmm. with all of one and a half staff members in the yes. alliance. <laughs> yes, yeah, which isn't unusual. No, oh no, it, it's it's not. Um, I guess it's probably one and three quarters, uh, <laughs> but it's still. I don't know how they do it. Yep. Yeah. Yep. What brings you the greatest joy with all this? Oh boy. Um, because it's obvious you're into it more than just taking the copious notes. You know. Oh yes. <laughs> you're, you're living and breathing it, and 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 it gets to expand a little bit. A good idea in those no geography. It wants to move and and take root somewhere. But, oh, but right. There's an energy in you and a joy in you with this. So. Uh, oh, oh, very much. I'm not sure that there's any one thing in particular, <laughs> except that you know to me it's so important. You know that artists you know, are healthy. Uh, and whether I mean you know with dancer transition, um, you know that is, you know that's so important for dancers because I mean very few of them can dance you know beyond the 30, 35 maybe, and they you know they have nothing after that usually particularly if they're ballet dancers I mean they don't they may not even have driver's licenses so there's a lot of support there and they are um, you know it's just amazing you know what these dancers can do afterwards I mean. They've, you know, physicians, um, PhDs, you know, massage therapy, a lot of them go into, you know, that kind of thing. Um, you, know, you name it, you know, they are there. The same with, um, you know, with, with the Artist Health Center. Um, I know how much it's, how important it is. And I just wish that more artists in Toronto um, took advantage of it. I mean, a lot of them, they will go to their family doctors. They're quite, um, you know, quite comfortable with their family doctors. But... So far, the you know the alliance or uh, the the center hasn't um, hasn't been able to get the word out that this would be a go to place for um, injuries and and issues that are specifically related to art, hmm. um, and which is too bad. I mean, we're working on it. You know, yeah, we're, we're very definitely working on that. But um, you know, it's it's a hard nut to crack. Yeah. <laughs> How many years have you been doing this? <sighs> Well, dancer transition, um, including as a volunteer, well over twenty years. Um, artist health, probably more than ten, and I've been secretary there almost from the beginning. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And now you're out on the road. Absolutely. Doing right. a regional uh, development. We'll call yes. It. Right. <laughs> <laughs> So I, I want to go back again to your your greatest joy, if there's a joy. Cause I know it's sort of a tough question because right. it's obvious you just live and breathe it. It's like magic. Uh, right. But if there's an anecdote in there, something that, you know, I've been doing this for 20 years, doing this for 10 years, and but there's this one moment when this kind of happened, and, and it just reaffirmed for me one more time that this is the path I, I'm supposed to be oh, on. Oh, right. Is um, anything like that? I think... And this isn't really telling tales out of school, but about five years ago, I had you know a fair number of health problems, and I debated about whether or not to um, resign from these. 
And I thought, no, damn it, I'm going to work for it. I'm going to work <laughs> through it. And I think that, you know, that was where, you know, I really do have that commitment because I think they're both, you know, they, both of them are such, um, um, you know, such tremendous organizations. Hmm. And I knew that I could, I could help, maybe not as much as I had um, before that, and I'm fine now. But, um, you know, I knew that I could, I could carry on. And so, you know, carry on pretty well, you know, for, you know, after six months, I, w I, w I was fine. So that... Um, so did it give you something to work towards or for while working for oh, your, sure. your health? Oh, sure. Absolutely. Stuff? Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's different from a nine-to-five job or the way we describe nine-to-five <laughs> jobs now. You know? It's a passion. Oh, um, right. Yeah. No, I mean, the... Um, yeah, you know, the amount of time that you put in. Well, once, a few years ago, uh, they were trying to figure out, you know, how many hours you know, you know, a person volunteered, and I can't remember how many it was now. But um, if it comes to taking notes, writing up notes, reviewing, you know, subsidy applications, uh, meeting on various committees, and also on, you know, on on two or three committees at the Artist Health Center. Um, also, a couple of committees on on dancer transition. Um, you know, it, it you know it adds up. You know, mm -hmm. very definitely. It, mm -hmm. it, uh, so. So here's an outside the box question. Yeah. Um, according to your bio, you have a PhD in philosophy. Yeah. Is there a connection between? No. <laughs> 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 no, no, my PhD actually is in philosophy of science. Right. So, um, no, I just, when I left Johnstown, and that was by choice, um, and this was University of Pittsburgh, you know, as, as I was saying, and that was by choice, and I moved to Toronto, and I had, I had sort of tired of, you know, being an academic. I wanted to expand, you know, beyond that. When you so, get your hands dirty. Yeah, and yeah, I mean, I, I'm not an artist, you know, in, in any way, shape, or form. But when I moved to Toronto, I, you know, I thought, okay, I think it would be fun to work, you know, work for arts organizations. So I spent about a year um, sort of researching it, I suppose. I took, at that point, the University of Waterloo had a Center for, for Cultural Management that offered courses in, in arts management. And so I took a couple of those courses just so that I could get you know, a few credentials. Um, decided really what I wanted to do with it was much more on the research side than um, you know, sort of working in a you know, front line uh, organization. So for about more than 20 years, um, you know, I worked essentially as a research consultant. You know, working on um, you know working for you know, federal government, provincial government, um, you know various other organizations that um, want to perhaps surveys done, um, took notes at various things, um, and um, quite enjoyed that. And then I decided somewhere along, okay, I'm not going to you know beat the bushes looking for any more um, you know any more. Uh, uh, you know, contracts, if they come my way, fine, I'll do it. And then after I was sick, I just, you know, I closed down. Yeah. And, you know, that was it. And, and uh, so, but no, there's really very little connection between, um, you know, teaching philosophy and particular <laughs> <laughs> philosophy yeah. of science. But I bet you give us another five minutes, we'll weave a connection in there somehow. <laughs> I suppose. <laughs> You know, I mean, I didn't really like aesthetics courses when I was yeah, doing philosophy. Yeah. <laughs> because that inquisitive mind is not very far removed from the creative yeah. mind. Uh huh. Yeah, that, that's quite true. Mm -hmm. you know, and I, I enjoy writing. Yeah. You know, so, which is why you know, you know, why I was probably quite good at you know writing you know consultants reports you know, right. as well. Yeah. Um, sort of a personal question. Yeah. What, what's the last book you read? Um, well, the Hillbilly Elegy. I was right. telling you that's one. I am reading in the middle, almost finished, with a book uh, called "The Most Beautiful House in the World." Oh yes, that by Vital Rivchinsky. Yes, I remember. And that. I've got about two more chapters, I think, to go in that. The <laughs> other one I have on the go is um, "Brown," which is by Kamal Al Salehli, who is um, he's a journalist. Do you do you know him or no. no? He's a journalist. He was at one point a theater critic for the Globe and Mail. His family are originally, I believe, Egyptian, but definitely, if you want to classify people, he's definitely brown, not Caucasian. Mm -hmm. And um, it's an exploration of what it is like to be brown and also gay. 
So I am about three chapters into that, uh, and it's um, it's very interesting. Uh, this is these are all for a book club that I, you know, that I belong to, right. um, and those are our three, and those I think are are the, you know That's keeping great. me going. <laughs> yeah. I'm just thinking, and you're part of three book clubs. I'm thinking, okay, where does this lady find time from? <laughs> you just read one of your days, like in all the committees. And there's three different book clubs. So oh, three book I know. Clubs. I just, I just two book clubs. Yeah, you know, not three, oh, but yeah, you know, okay. these, those three all happen to be for one book club, and then the other oh. one I don't. Um, uh, it's a bigger book club, and I don't yeah. read all of the books in you know in, in that book club. But right. yeah, no, two book clubs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great. The. Uh, Stuff to wrap us out. Is there something we didn't cover that you wanted to cover or thoughts or seeds to plant for Fredericton or New Brunswick for how to move forward with um, this passion? I think, I think probably the most important thing is to get local artists involved uh, in, the, in the progress right from the get-go. Um, they are, I mean, many of them you know, organize their own businesses I mean, they've, they've, they've got, you know, they probably have a fair amount of business acumen mm -hmm. and, you know, are able to, you know, get things organized. Um, you know, not all artists are, you know, right off in, you know, in left field, <laughs> you know, by any means. Um, yep. And to get, you know, to get them going, I think um, following, you know, the model of, um, you know, the Artist Health Center, try to attract a number of influential people in town um, particularly ones who are perhaps willing to provide, uh, um, you know, advice, support, um, financial support, perhaps, um, and um, medical people for sure. You know, try to get medical people involved um, as well because without that, um, you know, you're not going to get anywhere. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you can, certainly with the Artist Health Center, there were. Um, two or three physicians at um, Toronto Western that backed it the whole way. Absolutely driving force. They were on the early board of, um, you know, of them. Uh, and um, right now, actually, there's another one. Uh, and he was almost um, right from the very beginning um, an orthopedic surgeon. Okay. who um, He's the surgeon for the ballet company in the National Ballet School. And he also for the Maple Leafs. Yeah. Um, I mean, <laughs> makes sense. I mean, you know, he fixes bones. Yeah. Um, and um, you know, get that kind of support for um, you know to get the whole thing going. Um, probably it would be good. It wouldn't need to be a particularly elaborate one to get some kind of needs assessment study. What the artists feel they need, um, and I'm sure that there's somebody at UNB or somewhere. You know, that would be happy to you know, help devise um, you know, a survey that would be you know, that would work you know, for you know, for here, and that's not always the easiest thing to do mm -hmm. you know, to you know, to um, you know, develop a survey that you know, that really you know, provides the information that you want. But I think that would be a, a good place to start. Um, one of the things that when I talked to the people at the clinic, they suggested. Um, you know, having a you know essentially a network, developing a network of um, uh, physicians, other practitioners in town, that um, you know artists could call on, um, you know rather than having to go to a clinic. Um, mm -hmm. And with that, then it might, if there was such a thing, you know that kind of a network, it probably would be possible to bring in artists from all over the province mm -hmm. um, you know, as, as well. So I think those would be. But you know the most paramount thing is to get the artists involved, um, because if if you can't get that, then you're you're just never going to get started. Great. Yeah. Uh -huh. Great. Thank you so much. Oh, I'm delighted to be here. Paul, oh, it's wonderful. <laughs> Good. And thank you for watching. If you like the work we do, please support the program by clicking the Patreon link in the upper right hand corner and sharing it with your friends. Be good. Have fun. Love each other. The Dennis Report is an independent media production. To support the program, go to DennisAtchison.com and click Become My Patron on Patreon. <laughs>